Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Manuel, the CEO and founder at Sales Playbook. Hello. Hi Christian, thanks so much for having me. Nice meeting you. Please tell us what is uh, what does your company do? Yeah, so I founded Sales Playbook uh, a bit more than four years ago to help so far 230 plus B2B SaaS startup founders scale from zero to 10 million ARR by professionalizing sales without trial and error and just like scaling efficiently as well, which is nowadays really a key requirement. Um, we do this by really helping customers with implementation, training and coaching along five core challenges, like how to hit message market fit faster, build an outbound sales engine, set up scalable sales process, close more big deals faster and building world-class sales teams. What do you say are the most uh, common challenges that you see in uh, B2B SaaS? Uh, the five just mentioned, so um, really message market fit, like outbound sales not in place, processes that don't scale, okay. uh, deals that close not fast enough or not at the, the values they should, not often enough, and like how to really build a world-class sales team without hiring and firing tons of people. Do you only work in the uh, DACH region? Yeah, we really focus on a German-speaking market, like it's the second biggest sales market in the whole world um, at 100 million, like people but also like really strong uh, companies in there uh, so about mm -hmm. like 95% of our business is in Dach uh, there's a few others in the UK and other countries are you planning to expand furthermore so far like I think we can scale towards 10 million a like annual revenue like from from low seven figures um, without actually doing that yeah who are the typical clients of yours do they have to have a sales team what are the, the sizes there <laughs> Um, it's, it's really in venture terms, like from pre-seed to series B startups, like in terms of revenue, literally from zero. So we, we have like five plus customer scale from zero to a million in annual recurring revenue within less than 18 months. Uh, and from zero to one, it's really about like hitting message market fit, like finding a niche and like making it repeatable. And then from one to 10 is like really scaling e efficiently quite often. So they don't need to have a sales team in place. We actually do not recommend it until you have message market fit. Um, and wow. then like it, it just starts like with like a first sales hire head of sales or so and obviously with a few companies we work with like closer to the 10 million or even beyond that um, it's typically sales teams of like 10 to 30 people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how big is your uh, team our own team um, is actually like right now like uh, approaching 10 people full time like really our core team but we also build like the leading network of like sales experts for the call sales masterminds as mm. trainers, coaches, implementation partners um, of about 40 people that you cannot hire. Like just over there, we have specialists for pricing, negotiation, procurement, CRM, and all the, these topics that you need to tackle. That's fantastic. Well, um, and I'd love to hear your favorite uh, success story. So out of them all, uh, out of the, all the companies that you helped, uh, some, some interesting story. I think so, some interesting stories is, are always if we can help somebody like that has been struggling quite a bit, like so where the growth pretty much flatlined. I mean, we recently had a company, they took like four years from basically zero to about 200K in ARR. And then like they took less than three years to like 8X that to like um, like 1.5 million ARR plus with us. And they, they also scaled like their deal size from like four figures, like 5K average deal size towards even closing like a seven figure deal for like 1 million plus. And I think it's just like, yeah, so, so, so satisfying, like so also humbling to be a part of this journey over like more than a year. Um, and like see founders evolve and, and see like the really going from like sometimes a single person to a small team to really like a scale up company. And they're more like a partner to those companies, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the pricing for your uh, services? So the pricing is we, we learned after closing a few like high five figure deals, like fi basically 50 to 80K um, late last year, um, where the scope wasn't really clear. We do like what we call a launch pad, which is really where we sit down for, with you for like a four figure amount, like, hey, um, give you like an assessment of where you are today. Where do we recommend you go tomorrow? Like, how do you get there? What are some quick wins? What does the execution schedule look like? And then you decide basically what do you want to implement yourself, what is not a priority, and where may we be of help. Uh, so it's pretty co-creative uh, sales approach. And then clients typically invest uh, for an initial project anywhere between like 20 and 40,000 Swiss francs, euros, dollars, uh, pretty, pretty similar nowadays. 
um, and the project is like two to four months. And then it goes over like in whatever is the most suitable formula, what we call phase three for the client in terms of like further implementation or ongoing training and coaching. Thank you for sharing. Um, and do you have any competitors or how does it work? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. We have competitors. Um, like competitors is like, as always with competition, I think the biggest competitor is the status quo. It's like a founder thinking like, hey, um, build it and they will come like I, I just invest more in the product and it doesn't work and then they they might outsource it to a marketing agency or to a legion agency which typically fails as well then they hire that magic vp sales like who has done it all who's coming from salesforce or like a big company who's, who's never built something from like zero to a million or one million to ten right yeah. and then they hire some junior talent like hey two sdrs please find message market fit for me please validate the pricing and and that's that's found the work mm -hmm. and like with, with sparring and um then obviously like there's, there's great sales trainers out there there's great coaches out there there's, there's very little people who actually help you implement like s scalable sales structures like there's very few people doing that uh, apart from like a few like first name last name people i mean there's, there's christians and manuals out there like, like hey i'll work for you for a daily rate of like one two three k a day whatever and let's just go with it but Actually, very few people with like companies with a structured approach, like winning by design does for scale ups, US driven. But I think that doesn't mm. exist yet in the German speaking market. What we do. I understand. I understand. So that's how you differentiate. Yeah. And uh, when did you start the company? I started the company in March 2019, uh, just out of the frustration um, after building, being the first sales hire, like or sales pioneer, sales entrepreneur of a machine learning startup. And I mean, we, we had probably about like 10 X revenue, like from like five figure bookings to like higher six figure bookings, right? Booked revenue. Um, but I mean, I, I myself did a lot of mistakes, right? On how to build outbound on like what segment works and like setting up the CRM, like the processes in a, in a scalable data driven way. Um, we, we surely lost deals. We sh shouldn't have lost. Um, I myself did hundred interviews with like potential sales hires, like, Basically, like 20 case, like 20 small case studies, like five on site interviews. Like, we signed two people, one actually showed up, and, and that person left again within less than one and a half years after I left. So, well. I, I went through that experience myself, and I, I got the task from the board and the CEO, like, hey, man, I'll find us a trainer, coach, implementation partner to help us, like, scale from, like, from six to seven figures, right? And there were only people from, yeah, basically, like, car sales, insurance, telco, like chaga chaga, <laughs> like lower the price, give people discounts, always yeah. be closing. And these people didn't understand software as a service and these people didn't understand startup. And it, it was not particularly helpful. I mean, it was helpful actually. We invested like 5K for a two-day workshop and it actually helped us close a five-figure deal. So it was totally worth it. But we got a PDF with basically the cold call script of, from Wolf of Wall Street, more or less. And <laughs> I thought like there, there must be a better way for founders. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow, what, what a story. And uh, what would you say are the most common mistakes that uh, B2B SaaS companies make with their uh, sales processes? Um, wrote, wrote a whole ebook on that. Actually, we even printed that one like, with like 25 most common myths. Uh, I think one of them is definitely thinking of sales as an art form, right? Like the product needs to be rock solid and the product is not finished yet. And like, let's, let's get more feedback for the product and sales. It's just like, it just will happen, right? I mean, sales is a profession like any other, like legal or finance or operations or, or procurement. It needs to be professionalized. It needs to be built like an engine. And so that that's one, like not, not doing that. And the other one is simply going too broad. Like you have a technical solution that can be applied in 12 industries for three use cases, um, for two buyer personas for every company size. And then, then you become like a master of none, right? And it's very difficult to sell value to like 12 different industries because you don't understand them sufficiently and your profile is not sharp enough. And I think the third mistake then is, is, is just in hiring, in, in hiring too late, too early, the wrong people at the wrong, at the wrong time with the wrong attitude. That, that's a hard one to crack, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You need some, some years of experience to, to get that right. Um, how about the biggest challenge that you faced uh, throughout your career? Career at sales playbook or overall like the last 10, 15 years? However you prefer. Let's say overall. 
I think, I think overall over my career, I always had this passion since like working a bit for, for Tesla in, in Switzerland when it was still stock price was like five bucks, not 600 something. And, um, yeah, I always wanted to help, help founders, uh, in the best possible way to, to basically scale the positive impact. And I was looking for like how you can do this. I mean, eventually like sales is just the number one driver of enterprise value. And I think needed to go through the trends like, implement Salesforce for Accenture with world leading companies, build up sales for a machine learning startup and then start my own company, go through like four different business model changes, like probably like nine market offerings <laughs> to arrive where we are today at seven figure company revenue, um, like, I mean, annual revenue. And um, yeah, could it have been less painful for sure? But I mean, do you, can you just read a book and execute flawlessly? I don't think so. I understand. And how about the the biggest mistake that you that you made and you, and you guys shared? <laughs> yeah, there, there's many. I actually just today morning recorded like a 12 month retro, uh, retrospective, right? Like a 15 minute video and just like reflecting up on what we did. And I think one of the mm -hmm. things is just like getting getting too much in of this of this like startup spotlight, right? Like you need to scale like hyper growth and you need to do X Y Z and you need to uh, do build a big team, right? Everybody asks how big is your team and hired probably too many people before like figuring out product market fit like we had message market fit like people said like hey we need sales you do that like cool let's work but we actually managed to scale to like seven figure booked annual revenue without really having a product we had a platform where you could book one-on-one -on -one masterminds and so on but we did not define like if you buy a from us like what exactly will you get like what what's the outcome of this And, and that we fixed now and, and we see like already mm -hmm. like a, a deal size increase by three to four x per quarter and uh and much better contribution margin and like a much better customer experience as we uh, customer experience was was good before like fun like because like we had great masterminds but really like a customer journey which where we can get predictability in okay do you also take shares from the companies that you help uh no we do the... not i get this question quite frequently so far i mean like the, the the amount invested was literally still five figures or like angel investment and for the company to really open up like the whole legal and finance side on that like due diligence like stock option plan and so on just doesn't make any sense um like we're approaching some customs that actually like invest six figures with us and they're like it could be an option in the future but so far we prefer to keep it really clean oh, okay if if like a customer invest like let's say 20 to 50k with us and we would say like let's okay. take half of that in in stock options right like shares is really hard like mm -hmm. legally just going to the notary that would be like an amount of 10 to 25k and for that for a company to go to like the, the, the stock option plan and, and request like that that stock option pool is diverted and ah, so okay. on it, it's just too much hassle right and i mean this, this is about sales right so we help you increase the company valuation by seven or eight figures by helping you increase arr by six or seven figures and charge you a five figure amount which seems pretty fair in terms of like 10x value and if you believe in that then it's entirely worth it and if you don't believe in that then um it doesn't make sense to work with us i understand what were the most uh, helpful go-to-market strategies for uh, getting new customers <laughs> so that's a broad question but i think message market fit on focusing on a really specific ideal customer profile and then validating that with outbound sales beat calls linkedin messages email events um is really useful and you you cannot just like do this in the ivory tower without having customer conversations right um i think one mistake people founders often do is um they they want to sell too early so they really say like hey here's my product and here's a demo and like here's a poc and like here i can give you 20 percent discount when do you sign without understanding themselves the full value they bring to a company or do not right so if you ask for advice to get money and if you ask for money you often get advice especially in these early stages so the challenge in the in like the zero to one million journey is not to hit 1 million versus 800k it's like hitting message market fit so you can make it repeatable uh, yeah wow <laughs> yeah that, that's a mindset shift that uh, that we need to, yeah. to adopt all founders uh i'd love to hear your vision for the future sorry i did not get the question my vision for the future yes yeah um i think like what i love for entrepreneurs that's aos like the entrepreneurial operating system Uh, so literally like mm -hmm. how you run a company like as, as an entrepreneur 
and it doesn't exist for sales, right? Everybody's going madness and everybody's reading different books and some people follow Medic and some predictable revenue and some say like, are you Mark Robert, HubSpot guy, sales acceleration formula versus Aaron Ross, predictable revenue, Salesforce guy. I was like, that there's no operating system of how you actually run sales as a, as a startup. And I think like we have an opportunity to build that and just like really understand quickly where do things break and what do we need to fix next? And uh, now more on the personal side, I'd love to hear how you started your career. So the full story. Um, I, I think I started working at like 14, like at all jobs, like summer jobs and some like conveyor belt work, gardening work. Um, and then at 90, like ton, like a, a dozen jobs probably like in logistics and like, yeah, basically like freight log uh, logistics and so on. And then in 19, my summer job as like a barkeeper fell apart. So I, I actually did door to door sales for two months, which was, I think, still a game changer for me. It was like pitching 200 times a day. Um, sometimes like you win wow. five customers, sometimes you win one, right? But some, sometimes people ignore you. But just like <laughs> learning that you can have a spark a conversation with, with every human being. And some people react, most people say no. And some people like, tell me more. And, and like few people convert. But once you know, like, and I was saying it was on my second day, like, okay, somebody signed for $120, basically, 120 bucks. But I, in that moment, I knew, like, okay, if I, on average, have, like, 50 conversations, like, I, I talk to 50 people and, and 10 conversations and, like, three considering and one buys, like, then it's just, like, as long as I'm willing to show up and get to work, I have a fairly predictable model and I can start tweaking, like, my, my messaging, my, the people I talk to, um, my, my concern handling and everything. But, Yeah. That, that's that's still I think everybody should go through this every founder every sales rep and uh, you obviously have a lot of experience I'd love to hear your best piece of advice for a SaaS founder be close be close to your to your customers I mean really really do problem interviews understand the whole business not just like if they need your solution but understand what keeps them up at night understand like why they haven't solved the problem yet understand if, if this this is happening to everybody in the industry um, but, but really be close to your customers. Don't try to make money off them. Try to help them solve their problems and, and like get a better life. And the rest will follow. And that's the difference between selling somebody a feature for a, f a three, four figure amount, solving a problem for them for five figures, um, really being a top three priority for six or changing their life for seven. Exactly, I, I love that mindset. <laughs> well, uh, what's your favorite SaaS product that you use? Um, G Drive is helpful. HubSpot is helpful. Uh, Loom is helpful, like for video recording. Uh, there's tons of like sales enablement tools. Um, what, yeah, I think Loom is like has been game changing. Just like to record videos quickly, we used it a lot internally. We used it for video sales letters. We used it for our how-to guides. If you use Loom or Vidyard or Tolster for even like interaction, but I think video is the closest you can get to like a one-on-one -on -one physical conversation. Um, and, and like email and text is not replacing that entirely. Absolutely. Please tell us more about your podcast. Um, the podcast was basically like we did 150 episodes and we had like world recognized leaders such as Aaron Ross from Salesforce or Ian Koniak, top end, end enterprise uh, software rep from, from Salesforce or Guillaume Mubesh from Lemlist. And it just started with a conversation with Patrick Trim, B2 Day, Chief Sales Officer of Unique and Lars Mangelsdorf. Um, co-founder and chief customer officer at Yokoi. And uh, we just had a conversation like many times uh, where we discussed some of the things we discussed in this podcast, like, hey, it's really difficult to hire great sales talent. How do you ramp them? Like, how do, does this work and so on? And I just said at one point, like, hey, I think this is actually useful for other people that did not yet make the, the mistakes we did, right? Why don't we do a podcast? And it was like, yeah, why don't we do a podcast? <laughs> and we, this was a Thursday night, I remember. And then Monday, 5 p.m., we just said, like, okay, let's re hit record. And I think Trimpy <laughs> asked, like, hey, okay, but now? It's like, do you know how to do a podcast? Like, I don't know. I, I'll figure it out. And, and like, Lars, you ready? And it's like, born ready. And we recorded the first episode. And, and I think it just took off from there. And what, what we figured out, like, this is, again, like, asking for advice. Like, I went to people, like, from... The people I, I, whose books I read, like Andy White from Medic or like Chama Reimer from Mega Deal Secrets, and I just reach out to them and say, like, I love your book. Like, would you, would love to get you as a guest on a podcast? And he's like, sure, drop me a link. I'm like, okay. 
and <laughs> exactly <laughs> that goes back to number one advice like do maybe maybe do a podcast with your target customers like ask them like about their challenges like and where, where they want to go and like what keeps them up at night and like on un really understand your customers and uh, what other resources do you provide for uh, for the people that join your uh, program um i mean podcast, we... i saw you have a lot of uh, resources yeah for sure so we have by now probably about 70 plus like actionable worksheets templates for ideal customer profile sales story case studies um buyer personas concern handling uh, effort, like that's message market fit but the same for cold email cold call cold linkedin scripts uh, how to set up a sales process how to write your job position contract remote task etc um, we provide um, still group coachings to, to the customers who still want that right like and the one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching is still available uh, we also have like quite a few ebooks on every single one of these challenges now um, just like with hands-on tactics and so on yeah okay and how can people access it do they have to to be customers of yours no, they can simply go to the salesplaybook.com uh, dash resources like on on a page, mm -hmm. and it's it's all free, right? Like all the ebooks, all the templates up there, um, all the webinars are free. Like we did like um, an annual startup sales summit. It had thousand plus registered participants this year, so that's all free material. That's uh, super appreciated. Is there anything else that you want to mention on today's podcast? Uh, no, thanks so much for having me uh, to all the B2B SaaS founders out there. Um, yeah, it's just like give sales the priority as the number one and driver of enterprise value it deserves. Uh, build it yourself if you can. Hire great people if you can. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, LinkedIn works uh, perfectly well. And uh, shout out to Christian for having the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining and I really appreciate your uh, insights. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks so much.